Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Resident Evil. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemesis, and I'm reverting to audio only on this one because I've had a long day at work, and if I put lights on in my eyes to record anything, I'm gonna my head's gonna split open. I have such a bad headache, so I'm gonna just try to stick to audio on this one. So hopefully, you guys still enjoy, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. So if you have any, definitely share them because I feel like this is the one. This is the episode I'm gonna put Jill and Leon both in this episode, mainly because the Wesker video, the spotlight they did on Wesker actually had spoilers i feel like major movie spoilers in it so that'll be the next episode and if you want to stay away from those spoilers i recommend you not watch that you know little video they put out there on youtube and on instagram and twitter and stuff about wesker i would say avoid that if you don't want any spoilers but if you know you don't mind or if you've played the game it's not a big spoiler but they reveal something about the character so we'll talk about that in the next episode and this one we're just going to focus on leon and jill and you know and i just know that this is where the the controversy is with a lot of people so Obviously, for me, I've said this many times before, and I'll say it one more time just to reiterate so you understand my point of view. You can disagree with it, and that's fine. I think one guy even said I was gaslighting people, which obviously he didn't know what the word gaslighting meant. He clearly is just regurgitating stuff he hears online. But uh, but for people out there, uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't think the look of a character is as important than the character's you know motivations their characteristics you know whether they're loyal or or not whether they're trustworthy or not like all those things matter to me more than the look of the character when you're adapting something some people will disagree with that and they'll say that the look is as important or that you know that you can do both and yes in some instances you can do both uh, but rarely will you find that uh, when people come in and audition for your movie so I just want to point that out. People will sit there and say, you know, this character doesn't or this actor doesn't look anything like Leon. And I always say, well, look at the Leon from Resident Evil Retribution. He kind of looked like Leon, but he was pretty terrible at what he did in that movie. And same with Ada and everything. So and when then we've had versions of characters that were played by different you know, ethnicities or backgrounds like Oded Fair, who played Carlos. You know, he's not, he, his, his, he doesn't look like a Carlos Oliveira, but, uh, but his name's Oded Fair in real life, and he played Carlos, and he did a pretty good job because I think he represented Carlos well, like the character well, you know, and, uh, and his motivations. So, um, so, yeah, so again, I don't mind people who look different playing characters. Some do. I just don't, but obviously we can talk about that down below. If you want to, you know, obsessively argue about it, that's fine. Uh, but in this episode, so let's focus on that. Let's focus on Leon and Avon Yogia playing Leon. Now, before I had said, as long as he acts like Leon, I'll be fine. And so his little 3D character thing went up today, you know, or the other day, I should say, um, as of recording this. And, uh, and th that kind of just shows him, you know, gearing up. He's got his gun out and everything like that. So you're like, okay, that, that's pretty standard. They've been doing that with all the characters. But then they released the little video, like the 30, 40 second video, where they actually talked to Johannes Roberts, the director of this movie, and also the writer of this movie. And him kind of breaking down the character and then getting some, uh, you know, feedback from Avon Yogia, who plays Leon in this movie. And, you know, what his interpretation of the character is. And I will say this. So I always said, I don't mind who they got. I think Avon Yogi is a great actor. As long as he, you know, brings out the attributes of Leon, someone who I think is, you know, headstrong at times, but uh, morally has like high morals. He knows what's right and wrong. Like there's a lot of great things about Leon from the original game and in the remake as well. Um, he's very altruistic. He believes in helping people. And uh, that's his first and foremost reason for being a police officer. So to me, those are very strong characteristics of Leon to me. But the director of this movie apparently had a different take on Leon. So this is where I might actually push back a little bit. Because up till now, I've been defending Yvonne playing Leon. But I will say, this is the first video that made me go, okay, I'm wondering if they actually understood the character of Leon. Because uh, the director, Johannes, says that Leon is nerdy and a reluctant hero. And that's what he says in this, this short little video about the character. And Yvonne said, you know, he says like some other things like, yeah, you know, he wants to help and, you know, stuff like that. So he, he seems like he's pretty much on board with kind of how Leon is. He even says in some of his posts that, you know, Resident Evil 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. I played it numerous, numerous times. And to get to portray this character is just a dream come true. So that means a lot to me as a Leon fan. Like I guess, I mean, obviously Leon's not my favorite character in the Resident Evil universe. Chris is. 
but I do like Leon a lot. And hearing him say that definitely gives him a lot of points. I'm like, hey, that's great. This is someone who's played the game. He knew he was stepping into shoes that um, of a character that maybe he didn't look exactly like, but he's going to try to bring to life on screen. And so that gives me hope for him. But when I heard the director in this video say that Leon is a nerdy, reluctant type, uh, reluctant hero, I just don't understand where he gets that from. It, it doesn't make any sense to me why he feels that way. And, uh, and it's not a, a good interpretation of Leon. I don't think Leon is nerdy. And I don't think he's a reluctant hero. I think he knows when the right time to be a hero is, and he shows that in both the original Resident Evil 2 and then the remake, and in the numerous other Resident Evil games that Leon's been in. So I don't think that Leon, you know, I know he's kind of more of an action star in the later games, like 4 and 6, but I don't think he was any less of an action star in the first Resident Evil 2 either. Um, you know, it was definitely his first time seeing monsters, so he wasn't obviously, you know, great at fighting them at times, you know, <laughs> depending on who, you, you know, how well you play the game, but he, it's not like he was, you know, for, for his first time out and as a rookie police officer, I think he held his own very well in that first, uh, first appearance of Resident Evil 2. And so I just was surprised when the director said, oh, he's kind of a re reluctant hero slash nerd. I'm like, nah, I don't see that. So, so there's a chance maybe he, he got the wrong impression of Leon when he wrote this script and translated him. But hopefully, Avon Yogia, because he played the game, knows who Leon is and is bringing some of that to the role. So this is where the first time you'll hear me push back a little bit on the director's opinion of Leon. Um, but it sounds like Avon still has a, a strong opinion of Leon that is more like the game. So hopefully more of Avon's version of Leon comes out in this movie and less of what the director said, because I, I just didn't really like what the director said. And then last, I want to talk about Hannah John Kamen. Obviously, she's the other person cast in this movie that where there's some controversy among fans and stuff and, and a lot of debate and arguments even. Uh, for me, I like her as an actress. I think she's good. But um, with Jill, I more than Yvonne, I wanted to see her in motion. I wanted to see how she portrayed Jill and brought Jill to the screen. And now that we've seen trailers, which only showed snippets of her, but we got this now, this little short video. So obviously her 3D video went up. Um, and then now we have this, this actual little Jill trailer where she talks about the character and so does Johannes Roberts. And what they say about Jill in this is very interesting. And this is going to be something that I think people who don't understand translating to adaptation are going to rail against um, even more so. Because already there's people that are like, she doesn't look like the character. She doesn't look like the character. Now they're going to say she doesn't look or act like the character because Jill isn't any of these things. And I will agree to that second part to an extent. So in this little trailer snippet thing they show, um, obviously she mentioned the Jill sandwich. Uh, she's sitting down with Wesker having like a meal with him. Some people have been saying that there were some leaks, uh, saying that these two have a romantic interest in each other in the movie. And I'll go more into that in the Wesker video. Cause I feel like it's borderline spoilers. So, um, so in this video, I'll just try to keep it to what we see here in this trailer, which is her spending some time with Wesker. She makes the Jill sandwich a comment, which is a funny Easter egg to throw in there. That's pretty great. But, um, but she also has like a gallows sense of humor. She has like a real dark sense of humor. And she's asking people like, hey, what do you think a cool way to die is? Uh, and she's kind of like that character in horror movies, uh, like in Scream and stuff that are almost meta in a way where they, they make a joke and that will probably come back later. And so she'll probably answer like, oh, I think it'd be, you know, the worst way to die is being you know, bitten in half by a shark. And then maybe later she gets bitten in half by a shark or she says getting stabbed. And then maybe later she gets stabbed or something. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious if she's going to make it to the end of this movie. If she already has a relationship with Wesker, obviously we know in the games, Wesker does, you know, take Jill at one point and infect her and, uh, and turn her into like a mindless drone of his. Um, so if there is a romantic relationship between them, that could be a reason why Wesker doesn't just outright kill her in this movie. And maybe the movie ends with him, you know, taking her and, and then they set up that like that Resident Evil five version of Jill for later on. It's possible or maybe not. Who, who knows how this movie is going to end, who, which characters will live or die. Uh, you know, I don't really know. And I stay away from rumors and spoilers and leaks. Um, so I, but I did want to mention that you know, there were people talking about uh, them possibly being in a relationship. And it seems like there's some evidence for that here. Uh, but going back to the gallows sense of humor, she, you know, she's asking people, how do you think, you know, what do you think is a cool way to die? And Chris is like, you're a freak, you know, Valentine. Um, so it shows that already on the team that there's, she's kind of the oddball. She's the, the, the outsider in a way. Um, so maybe the others kind of just think she's weird. 
Uh, but maybe because she has a dark sense of humor is why Wesker, you know, because of the twist with that character, maybe that's why he likes her. Um, and, and so I know some people are going to be like, I don't like that relationship. I, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Why would those two have an interest in each other? It's unprofessional, <laughs> you know, for, for her to be, um, interested in someone who's her commanding officer in, in a certain way, or, her, you know, uh, the person she reports to. And I agree to all that, uh, but we don't know the extent of it until we see the film. Uh, maybe it's something where, you know, Wesker's like, yeah, I'm thinking about retiring and, you know, would you, you know, move away with me, you know, or whatever. Maybe he has plans to you know, leave Raccoon City and then all this happens. So we don't exactly know what they're going to do with uh, Wesker in full, but we'll talk more about him in his next episode or in the next episode of this I'll do. Um, but for Jill, I just, the, the sense of humor and stuff, that's not stuff that's in the game. So I know there are going to be people that just rail against that. But again, when you're adapting something, if you, if I really look at Jill and Chris from Resident Evil 1, you, all you get is, okay, these are people that have a job and they go into this place to do their job and their job is not exactly what they thought it was, you know, kind of like Predator. They're going in to like uh, break up this skirmish and, and, and rescue people that were, you know, captured or whatever by, by uh, you know, warlords and stuff. And uh, and then they get there and a, an alien from outer space is there and, it, and they have to adapt and change and that ends up getting a lot of them killed uh, when they're battling the Predator. And that's kind of what resident evil is right uh so these characters are just people on a mission and they have to adapt and change throughout the story but in the game you don't get a ton of their personality so we don't really know jill isn't into dark humor or gallows humor because you don't spend a lot of time with her before she goes into the mansion and so uh and then obviously everything after the mansion she's super serious she becomes a super serious person uh when she's like you know writing diaries to herself in resident evil 3 you know like uh october you know 29th or whatever uh daybreak or you know however the the, the thing goes at resident evil 3 so this is definitely adding to her character and changing her character to an extent and for that reason i'm maybe a little bit more so interested in hannah's take on the character more so than uh than i would have before because i was like okay they are adding something to the character they're they're putting a sense of humor to her they're putting a point of view to her and that's some things that you don't always get in the video games i mean you might get it in some of the extended lore around the video games because other writers bring those in when they're interpreting it and you may see that as canon but when you just look at the raw Resident Evil 1 video game, you don't really know what kind of sense of humor Jill has. And so by adding it, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think adding something to her like that is I like more than misinterpreting her the way I feel like the director, when he calls Leon nerdy, I'm like, that feels like a misrepresentation uh, of the character because I don't see Leon as nerdy. Um, and then when you, but when you say, okay, Jill has a dark sense of humor, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I didn't know that about her before. So if you're adding that to make her a little bit of an outsider on the team because you have story reasons for that, then I'm, I'm at least still intrigued in that. So I'm still on board for the Jill thing. Um, in this trailer, you know, she's kind of goofy and weird at times. And again, that's a little bit more personality than we're used to with Jill. Jill's a little bit more straight laced in the game, but still that doesn't turn me off from this version. The Leon thing, I just hope he's not a, a reluctant, nerdy, you know, hero because I don't feel like that's very true to Leon. Uh, but those are just my thoughts, and I rambled long enough, so let me know what your thoughts are down below uh, about these two videos that we saw and about these characters, and we'll continue the conversation, as always, down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the next episode focusing on Wesker. Peace.